Welcome to Working Help Desk Ticket. Today we're going to talk about Event Viewer. We're going to talk about some credentials issues. We're going to talk about some VPN setup issues. We're going to talk about Outlook password pop-ups. And there's more. I just can't think of it right now. So let's just get to it because we have a lot to cover. Fun fact, I have no idea what I said in that intro. Why? Because I haven't recorded that. To me, I haven't recorded that. I know you guys know, but I have no idea because I record that intro after I make this video. So that way I can tell you about the topics ahead of time. So I have no idea. I hope it's a, I hope it's a good intro. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, welcome. Uh, if you're finding this video for the first time, my name is Irvin and uh, also known as Kobo Man, mainly because that's the name of my channel. Uh, also, another fun fact, it, Kobo Man is just a fictional name based off my a nickname, uh, which is, uh, you know what, I'll save that for the next video. If you want to know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> or if you want, you can just say hi, hello, or present, just sort of as if we were in the class. I really appreciate that. We have a couple of notifications, so somebody responded to previous tickets that we worked. I Let's see, a signed ticket to me. I also hope you're having a wonderful day. That's very important. Don't let things stress you out. Let's just have some fun and relax and learn some stuff. All right, let's follow up on tickets. Uh, let's took it. Let's look at this one here from Daisy Marquez, and they're just gonna do a really, really quick. This one it was about uh, exporting a video from Adobe Premiere Pro in H.264 format. Daisy shared the video with a couple other people. Only one person can see closed captions, so I suggested that there might be some issue with the player video player on the second person that she sent the video because the video obviously has closed captions uh, installed or provided with it and uh oh she responded thank you for the response daisy good morning erwin good morning thank you for your help i couldn't physically see her computer to see what's going on I did relay a message to her through another person about her player or editing program not being able to play the file. I ended up having to convert the file from MP4 to AVI so the person can see it on her computer. That's very unusual because, and, and it's kind of weird. Well, I, I don't mean to say, well, it is weird. It's unusual and weird. I guess that's the same thing that people are still using AVIs. And I understand why you had to do it because when you submitted a ticket you mentioned that they requested the avi which is an outdated format for video mainly because it's huge all right uh, all right and i'm glad that it fixed it i guess so for those reasons i'm going to close the ticket thank you for submitting the ticket i'm going to say uh, add internal note issue resolved by Format change to AVI dot AVI. Sure. Okay, let's see other ones. This one was from MD Alum. Uh, Outlook can't schedule team meetings in Outlook. Outlook calendar meetings. Uh, so he works scheduling meetings online, but he couldn't. He can't invite team calendar meetings in Outlook. Right. This one was also, I'm trying to, online team meeting and Outlook is working. I checked, add in, okay, so this is the one with assumption where I, I assumed that he was using an add-in because he mentioned add-in to schedule meetings. So Teams add-in, Teams, Microsoft Teams add-in for Outlook didn't work. It worked online whenever you schedule, uh, um, whenever you schedule meetings, but it didn't work, I guess, on the desktop version. And did we get a response? No, we didn't. So I said, please check add compatibility. Also make sure team plugin is configured. Curl, let me, let me know if that helps. I did not get a response. So I'm going to close the ticket. And uh, normally you wouldn't, 
close tickets like this you would definitely leave a note this and that but you know this is for educational purposes and I need to get to other tickets but never close them without noting making sure that everything is resolved here's another follow-up real quick and don't worry we're gonna get to other tickets we're gonna talk about in details these are just follow-ups from the previous video if you haven't watched previous video go back to my channel and, and watch it which is number 25 this is number 26 and it says voices from laptop uh, from Zehra I can hear loud voices from laptop at the time of charge at the time so I assumed here that there was fan noise uh, related to the laptop making fan noise so I suggested the you know check the laptop for fans to, to make sure the fans are not obstructed you know for dust and something blocking fan ventilation didn't receive a response and then we're going to close the ticket here now because no response I have to move on okay now we've taken care of all the tickets that were uh, assigned to me they needed a follow-up and I do have two notifications here uh, one was from this is the one from Daisy we talked about and this was one for Sergio we closed the ticket and let me just see what Sergio had to say just real quick yeah this must have been from previously anyways we're gonna go back we're gonna go back to the system and work tickets on a sign there we go another one from Sergio I'm going to sign ticket to myself it says no credentials found I insert my PIV card and it says no credentials for found so I'm assuming this PIV card is something related to some kind of authentication I don't know exactly what PIV card is. I'm going to Google it some, and I'm going to see what that is. PIV card. What is PIV card? PIV stands for personal identification, identity verification is credential. PIV cards are used government wide to control access to federally controlled facilities and information systems at the appropriate security level. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is something you plug into your, I mean, I don't know how they're using this. Is this PIV card used? Uh, if anybody's got experience with this, is this card used? Let me see if there are any images. Oh, so it's definitely either scanned or used. It's either used for entry. I mean, if it's used for entry to a building, then you need to talk to security, right? Security has to give you access to the building. Now, if it's one of those cards that uh, used to uh, that you use to basically log into a computer because I've seen this before uh, where a keyboard with card scanner I forget what it's called this is before my time that this was used I don't know that anybody else uses this but here it is I've seen these these are like I don't know if people are still using this, but they insert the card here. You see on top here, they insert it just so like as if you're paying for something and this gives them the proper authentication. So it's simple here. I'm going to say, hello, if error message is no credentials found, then you need to acquire credentials I mean as simple as that right it's very straightforward and for those reasons I'm going to close the ticket if you get somebody who's like new to the company and they need login credentials for something they need to go through the proper uh, proper um, channels to get access if you are the one who's going to give them the access that's fine but this access needs to be submitted and requested by their manager okay you can't just give access to somebody willy-nilly right meaning that you can't just anybody because that's a huge security risk you cannot give access to everybody that just asks for access 
or it could be somebody who just suddenly needs access to a specific system you know they need to have a way and sometimes users just like either play dumb and i'm not saying sergio is playing dumb here i don't know what's going on here but some of them do some people or they just want to bypass their manager we don't know this is a security issue we need to be super careful about this but they might come back to you and say well how do i go about that well talk to your manager talk to your whoever hired you to give you access right isn't this common sense you know you wouldn't be you would be surprised how many times people came to me i need to i need to have access to this system okay that's fine uh but your manager needs to request this type of information these are there is a method in place there is there are channels you have to go through you cannot bypass your manager because your manager needs to be aware that you are getting access to this so that's what needs to be done if you need access you need to follow the proper procedures outlook password prompt issue from uh, Salman, thank you, Salman, for submitting ticket. I've never seen a ticket from you, but thank you. Welcome to the channel. Outlook password prompt issue. All right. Hi, sir. Hello, sir. I'm I'm using Outlook 2016. When I open Outlook, it will work fine for some time. Then automatically, a pop-up will come up, come will come to enter password, and after entering correct password, the pop-up will come again. I have configured the two email accounts in Outlook 2016. So this shouldn't be happening. I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I do see a one more um, note here from you. It says, it will be helpful if you mention the steps to troubleshoot this issue. Well, the Outlook issue for a popping up password comes up mostly from what I've seen. Whenever you change your password, your uh, password for the domain or your actor directory password. That's the pretty much the only time this should be happening and only if your password hasn't been replicated locally at local level. So what do I mean by that? Sometimes you would change the password on the domain, but sometimes there are different ways provided to you to change the password. The typical way is you lock the computer or by doing this, by doing control alt delete and like this. By the way, you can do control alt delete through the task manager if you go to where is it at? It used to be here. Oh wow. Did they remove this? Huh. Look at that. You used to be able to send I guess I have I have haven't used it in a long time, but you used to be able to send control alt delete through the task manager. Anyways, you know how you do control alt delete? And then it gives you different options to change your password. Can I do this? I'm going to try to do this on, on this remote computer, okay? There it is. So you can, you know, lock, switch user, sign out, or change your password right here, right? So you click change password. It's going to ask for your old password. Let me see. So it's going to ask for your old password. Then you type in the new password twice. So that's the normal way, and that should replicate locally, meaning that your computer will be aware as long as it's connected to the main you know like everything's fine everything's connected to the network uh, it should replicate locally and then when next time you open up your outlook it will know it should know that you've changed your password because it was replicated locally so open up your outlook and this is not exactly the outlook that you're talking about but it should just already know and then it's just you it is just working and, but if it, it's not aware that you've updated that password, and this can happen if you go to a website, usually for businesses that use SSO, single sign-on, single sign-on type of system where they use one password for all kinds of different things, and they try to manage, you know, Active Directory authentication, meaning your password that you use to log into your computer through some kind of a what I call a Mickey Mouse website that controls that. So you can you go to an SSO website, for example, uh, what kind of website can I go to? I guess I'll go just go to my own website. Imagine if I was to go to CosmicNova.com and I can't log into it, I would get a pop-up that's asking me to log in. 
and it's asking for SSO, single sign-on credentials. So if that's happening, then you use your regular computer login. So you use that regular computer login, but you may get a pop-up that says, hey, your password is going to expire or your password has expired, and you can change it, and you can change it on the website for the SSO login. So any website which uses SSO login will have the ability to prompt you and change that password on the website. So now you change the password on the website, but guess what? It hasn't replicated locally. So what do you have to do? Is do Alt, Control, Delete, or just lock your computer. So Windows L on your keyboard, lock your computer, lock, and then just unlock it with your new password. Okay? That should resolve it. Uh, the And you've configured two email accounts in Outlook 2016, and it keeps coming up. It shouldn't be coming up. Uh, and you've already, looks like you've reset the email account. I'm going to wait for you to respond. I'm going to say, uh, hello, this is Irvin with PC support. Please make sure that if you use an SSO uh, SSO login that uh, it and if you happened to change the computer password on that website that is that password is also replicated slash updated at local level not lever not lever <laughs> level <laughs> computer you can you know what um I already said how to do it. I'm going to say, please watch my video on this. And it's going to say number 26. That's the number of the video. Comes out Sunday. On Sunday. All right, let me see if I get this right. Hello, this is Erwin with PC Support. Please make sure that if you use an SSO login, and if you happen to change the computer password on that on that website that the password is also replicated slash updated local level computer to emphasize that it is uh, what i mean yeah that's good i'm going to leave it open all right we're going to work on this one here I'm going to assign it to me. And this is from uh, Rut, uh, Rutra, uh, Rutra Kumar. Rutra Kumar? Uh, I hope I said your name right. Thank you for submitting the ticket. And it looks like you put everything in the, in the title. That's fine. Hi, sir. This is uh, Rutra. Rutra. Hi, Rutra from Chennai. Oh, that's India. Awesome. Hello to everybody in India. Big hello. I have facing issues. My storage HP server got restarted automatically. And I get... Uh, let me see here. My storage HP server got restarted automatically. And then I, I get... Let me see. I get checked the logs too. There is more... I, I checked in logs too. There is more reason showing, but what? No, exactly. Uh, Information. Um. Hmm. Okay. I think what you're asking here is that you saw that your server got restarted automatically, but you want to know why, and you want to see in logs. All right. Well, that's straightforward. So if you right click your start button and then go to event viewer, 
you should be able to see this. This is a good ticket because I haven't talked about event viewer much. There's a different version of this. I forget what it's called, but there is, uh, um, I think it's called system. Oh boy, what it's called. There's, I have a video on this specifically, where it's a simplified version of event viewer if if it's event if if event viewer is difficult to follow and it gives you straight to the point they will talk about restarts and reboots there is a video on my channel that i've talked about i just forget the name if you know the name remember it, let me know but it gives you diagnostic of the computer if some kind of events happened which is not event viewer and so you want to look for system logs. This is a PC reboot, right? This is a PC, or not PC, but I guess computer, uh, in this case, server reboot that automatically happened. And we're assuming that it automatically happened. We're going to find out, but, well, I'm not going to find out because I don't have your computer <laughs> or your server here. But this is how you would find out. So go to Windows Logs. Go to system, right? Because we're talking about a system, and we know it's it's a reboot on this computer. Actually, you know what? We might be able to recreate this because of this computer that I use for uh, recording these videos, I actually pulled the plug on it uh, just to, because I don't have time to wait for it to shut down, and I don't use it as my main computer. But it should reflect that. So we know it's a reboot that happened automatically, or it just lost power, right? You know, but we don't know yet, but we're going to have to find out. So go to system because it, it's talking about your system. And here are the log files. So if you select any of these, you can get a brief description of what's going on. Like here is this one. You see how it changes and it gives you details what it is. Some of them are just for your information like this one. And here are some uh, basic issues. And it's talking about reset the device, blah, blah, blah. These are normal warnings that you would see unless you're experiencing some specific issues. Now, what we want to look for are the red exclamation ones, which talk about some critical issues, critical errors. And we can sort this. However, this thing is super, super slow. We can scroll down to it and follow the timeline. You can see that this is 429. So I'm recording this on Friday, 916 AM. By the way, I'm not doing this while I'm working. Because I know this is 9.16, it's around 9.40 a.m. right now. I actually worked uh, on a previous Saturday, so it's my drop day. So I'm not um, stealing from my company, just so you know. By the way, just real quick, I've noticed some people working two jobs, working from home. By the way, if you're doing that, it's actually a crime. It's illegal. Just so you know, it's illegal because you are getting paid a specific amount of time to work within that specific amount of time for that company. And if you're working a second job and you haven't told that employer, you're that's a crime, just so you know, because you're stealing. You're stealing technically. You know, let's say you're working on your other job but ignoring the first one and you're getting paid, you get money for what? For nothing? So that's stealing, just so you know. Sorry, it's just a little bit of out of... Out of <laughs> so when I'm scrolling down and you can find the timeline, here's a critical one right here. Look at this. And here's exactly what I was looking for, and it just happened to see, just happened to be. It says critical here, and it's talking about system power. And it says the system has rebooted, rebooted without cleanly shutting down first. This error could be caused if the system stopped responding, crashed, or lost power unexpectedly. Lost power unexpectedly. Remember, I literally just told you that what I was doing is uh, unplugging. I just literally just shut the power whenever. I, um, whenever I'm done with using this computer and now it has rebooted and the computer can tell that it lost power, right? The system has rebooted without cleanly shutting down first. So it knows that I haven't clicked start power shut down. I did not tell it to shut down at all. I just pulled the plug on it and it knows it that happened. And this is exactly what you're looking for. And it'll t give you the time and date and it'll tell you why and if it's and if if there is a you know and if there is a possible reason for it here it clearly tells you that it has rebooted without cleanly shutting down and most likely cause is loss of power it could be crashed too but if you see it that it's crashed then you should look for more critical errors usually associated with 
Well, here's here's something. Here we go. Previous shutdown. See, it knows exactly here. The previous system shutdown was at 246 on 425. It was uh, it was unexpected. It means I pulled the plug on it, right? So, and we're gonna. You would have to be. You, you can look for specifically for Soros, and that's kernel, kernel power. Here's a vent log. Well, to help you for this one here, here it is, kernel power. This is the first one we looked at. So you can sort by source kernel power. You can do a custom, you can create a custom view here. Yeah, let's do that. It takes a bit. I'm going to do a custom, uh, custom view here. So if you click on a custom view over here to the right, you can say any time. But if you know that the issue happened, for example, today, you can specify a last hour last 24 hours last let's do last seven days and i'm going to say critical show me only critical and show me errors and that way and i'm going to tell it to show me system logs and it's already selected there so i'm just going to click ok i'm going to click ok and there it is it sorts it every for everything for you you don't have to look for it. so here are all the ones that are on this system you see there you go. That's how you do it. Okay. Hello, Ruthra. I have your ticket for um, checking system logs. You can use the event viewer to find the reason for reboot and you can also look through there and look to see if it was like a system update that caused it scheduled system update it's all in there you just have to spend time looking for it you know so it's not necessarily just shut down you can look for other things that's the point of it uh, please watch my video for explanation Uh, I'm going to say this Sunday, number 26. Well, you know what? I'm going to give you a little bit before you, before I just say, oh, wait, wait for my video, which is two days from now. Uh, I'm going to say you can look for kernel dash kernel dash power log errors yeah to get you started at least i'm gonna leave it open let's do one more from lantistos Thank you very much for submitting this ticket. I appreciate it. Hi. Hello. I was told that I will be starting to do work from home. My boss asked me to ask you guys how to connect my computer to a VPN to be able to connect to the office. Please help. All right. Sure. So I have a video on on Pulse Secure, which is another VPN. I'm trying to think where I can find it. Pulse Secure, Pulse Secure. Uh, that's just an example. Okay, well, here, here, let's let's just do this. By the way, you can connect to a VPN just using your computer. If you go to VPN Setup, just type in VPN Settings. And here it is. You can add a VPN connection to your computer. I, You know, for big companies, this is not going to work because it needs specific authentication, specific setup for the server, this and that. So I'm going to say VPN login example. Here we go. So you install VPN on your computer, VPN software. You can install VPN software on your computer. And I'm just going to pick. I mean, I don't know. They're all similar. All right. Here, I'll just pick this one here. So when you uh, open up your 
application that you're using for a VPN, right? You get this pop-up where it asks you for your username and a login. First thing you got to do is select the server. Sometimes you get to pick the server that, that you're connecting to before you get this login pop-up. Sometimes you get the selection at the login, which is what you see here. So you see, you know, split tunnel and you, you know, use the up and down arrow here to select the server or you select the server and then you just get a pop up for your username. This depends on how your company set up to use VPN. My company is set up to use uh, authentication with a combination of a what they call a username and then followed by a secure pin followed by a duo code which is a randomly generated code that you use to log in along with your secure pin or in some some cases it's just a password but it, in my case it's just numbers to make it easy to to uh, remember and uh, let me see how how can i here's what we're going to do here i'm going to download this image save image as okay and i'm going to i'm going to open up this video editor and I'm going to show you. Zoom in. Oh wow, this is blurred out. Oh wow, this is blurred out. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get a better image. Just bear with me here. Let's try this one here. <laughs> Okay, hopefully this image is better. Here, this is a little bit better. Okay. So you get the login like this. And then for your username, password, uh, you can type in whatever it is. If it's based off your domain, then type in your domain password, which is the same as your computer. I'm sorry, your domain login, which should be the same as your computer login. Okay, just a moment. I have to resize all of this. I was not expecting to work uh, this here like this. I wasn't expecting to do this is basically what I'm trying to say. So you type in your computer login right here, whatever that is, if it's using the same as your computer login. It could be something else. I don't know. You need to check these login credentials. And then password, in my case, I'm using a secure pin which is a specific pin password that you've set up for you. And a lot of times it's usually eight digits, at least eight digits. You know how whenever you create password for something and the uh, minimum requirement is eight characters, eight combination of letters, uh, this and that, that's kind of what I'm talking about here, except this is just eight digits. And then for our second password, would be your duo login, which is, I'm going to say random lead gen narrated number. An example of that is duo, right? It doesn't have to be duo. You can get a different ones. You're going to have to ask this. It's not fair for your company to say, oh, you figure it out on your own. They need to tell you what they're going to use, right? It's not something that you can just decide to do or some random person on the internet to tell you like me, you know, I'm a random person on the internet. So that's what you need to do to enter here. Now I see, I hope, see it got blurred out. Sorry about that. The image, that's the gist of it. But sometimes you will have, if it's an image, that's kind of like this here. Oh, wow, this is all blurred out. I'm sorry, guys. But just to kind of show you here, 
I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just gonna start typing and I'll explain. Hello. This is Irvin. Wow, I can't spell my own name. Irvin with PC. I swear, I'm holding a shift and it doesn't do that capital C. PC with. This is Urban with PC support. Sorry. I have your ticket about VPN setup. Follow these steps. Yay! I love doing these follow these steps things. Number one. Oh, what the heck is going on? Number one. Install vpn software number two acquire login i'm terrible today acquire login credentials number two use your login name and password use your login name and password and I'll show you just an example of what I'm talking about note password might be a combination of password plus randomly generated code. For example, here, let's do a digit number. So let's do five, six, two, four, I don't know, eight, four and i need two more right so one three so that's eight digits and then you would plus add that means don't put the plus sign there do not put plus sign there just add this is just me saying add this and it could be a randomly generated eight digit code again which could be like five 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 zero two four eight nine right so add it like this as the password okay otherwise it's not going to work most likely that's how it is set up for me uh it could be different from you just make sure that you're doing it correctly of course this is training issue right this could be a training issue and uh, but that's okay this ticket is uh something that is very educational for help desk and i want sometimes some people have to put in a comma just to emphasize and to separate that's how it is in pulse so pulse secure vpn some people use comma have to use some don't why is that i don't know but the comma may mainly indicates that you're putting in a duo code so what is duo code just to show you duo code here's an example you can do it on your phone. You can get Duo on your phone. See, these are randomly generated numbers. You can get Duo on your on on the computer, or you can just see here's just here's tons of examples. Here's another code. It's that multi-factor authentication thing, right? That's what that is. And you can get a token code, which is physical. Here it is. I mean, these are, you know, but this is, these are what they're called. You see there, you can get one of these, you press a number and it generates, but it has to be set up for you to use. Okay. And most of all, step four, please watch the video this Sunday. Period. All right. I think this one is for educational purposes only. This is not a real ticket necessarily, so I'm going to close it. Yeah, I'm going to close it because I don't need to follow up. 
It's not like something's broken, so I'm going to close it. And don't forget to note the ticket. I should have noted it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. Uh, but there it is. I'm going to leave it at that. Please submit more tickets. Right now we have uh, uh, eight more tickets to work that are unassigned. So please submit more tickets if you want more content like this. If the tickets run out, then there's not going to be any more content, just so you know. I appreciate anybody who does submit tickets. But if there are no more tickets submitted, then I, you know, I there's just not going to be anything for me to make because I really can't come up with the new things to talk about anymore. Uh, I At first, I was creating these tickets by myself, and I've created tons and tons of them. But I simply don't have time or don't have any idea to submit more tickets so if you have actual issues you want me to talk about please submit tickets and then we're going to keep making these more making more of these videos indefinitely right we're going to keep going it and keep going indefinitely we're just going to keep you know learning keep learning okay that's it i uh hope you have a wonderful day hope you have a nice sunday and take care bye bye